So I, I wanted to stack a, a, a simple passage of Scripture um, tonight, and that's the, the story of, of Mary and Martha. We'll put it up in a sec. Um, but yeah, I just, it's, uh, at the beginning of the year, I, I kind of felt, I felt the passage of Scripture, and I, I started just prepping some, uh, some notes and potential sermon for it. And then uh, one of the elders put on our WhatsApp group, oh, hey, have you listened to Andrew's sermon on Mary and Martha? And it was literally within the same week. Um, so I did. And uh, so if you are about 20% of the sermon, I, I credit to him as well. Just wanted to balance my views. I was uh, heading in one particular direction. And then uh, uh, it's always important when reading Scripture just to, to tension it and, and balance Scripture. Uh, we, can, we can easily just pull out the first thing that, that we read. And, and I'll, I'll show you in this passage of Scripture how it's easy to take one viewpoint. But if we, if we balance it out, and I think that's the message that's coming from the conference this year, is just a, an incredible love and intimacy with Jesus on the one side side but then at the end of the conference was well what now well, what do we what do we do with that we can't we can't remain in that place of just intimacy and um, and it's very important that we we do have intimacy with Jesus and that we do spend time with him and that'll be time in the word it'll be time in worship uh, what, whatever you know, it'll be time listening to uh, apostolic teaching uh, it'll be time just getting together in each other's homes and just you are just massaging the Word and just spending time in His presence and just the Holy Spirit coming and prophesying over one another and bringing each other into new freedom. So there's all of that, but 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 what what then? You know, what do we what do we do with all this? We can't just remain in this wonderful bubble and 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 it's cool and we come to church and we have awesome worship and the worship this week has been seriously awesome. I mean, I'm just blown away by just the quality of of worship leaders that that exist across the congregations and and tonight really, guys, you're well done. It's it's really it's really superb. So if we can just put that passage of scripture up, uh, it's in, it's in Luke uh, Luke 10, from this 38 to 42, and it reads as follows: Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted, and I want you just to she was distracted. We'll come back to that just now with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to come and help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Now at face value, and if you read that scripture, and we all have, most of us will probably focus on, on the fact that um, uh, Mary's, Mary's commended um, for choosing the better part, for being intimate with Jesus, for sitting at his feet and just really enjoying his presence and remaining in that, in that place. And he actually rebukes Martha for being busy and serving too much. So I also want to just point out in that passage of scripture just a couple of things before we get to the, the crux of it. This is, a very, this is a home, and, and homes are going to become very important, uh, particularly here as well, as you just grow and you just bring those people into, into fellowship. Um, this is a home where there was relationship. There was a, a, a warm relationship between Mary, Martha, Lazarus was also the brother that was staying in the house, uh, and Jesus who came. It was almost his safe haven. It was his place away from home, a place where he would retreat from, from ministry and come and just... Uh, just enjoy a meal together, and uh, and of course Jesus being Jesus, I don't think it was ever just parking off and uh, and enjoying a meal. There was there's always just a, a teaching and uh, and an input, and uh, people would just sit at his feet and listen to what he what he had to say. So we can easily read into that that it's just we're just gonna we're just gonna park off for the rest of our lives, and we're just gonna sit at the feet of Jesus, and and that is the better part, and it and it is a good part. It's uh and it's an extremely good part, and he does say that it she's chosen wisely, and she's actually chosen. The better part, but but we'll see as time goes on. There's a there's a contrast to that. There's a there's a balancing act and there's a, a tension. And uh, and we've got Martha, who's the 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 serving in the kitchen, making all the food, serving, 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 anxious, busybody, trying to trying to make sure that everything's uh, sorted. And then we've obviously got Mary, who's just, she's happy to just park off at Jesus' feet, let uh, Martha carry on do her thing, uh, all will work out, and and she she is. Choosing a good part, 
But but what about are you? Is anybody a Martha here? I know that Marlene's possibly a Martha. I'm a Martha. Uh, I like to run around throwing nappies over walls and gates. Uh, I don't do that much nowadays. Uh, that was in the in the early days. So uh, so some of us will be Marys, some of us will be Marthas, and uh, and I think there's there's an importance that um, it's a both and. It's not a it's not an either or. And uh, I think we need them in combination. And I think each in each and every person we actually need to be Mary in some aspects. But we also need to be Martha's in other, and we need to learn how to become Martha's. And uh, some of us, it's that's not natural, and um, you know, some of us will just be prepared to be Marys. And uh, yes, some must be Marys, some must be Martha's. And uh, and I think there might even be a third category, which I'm going to be bold enough to say that there might be people are in, the, in neither category, that you neither are Mary and spending huge amounts of time in Jesus' company and his presence, nor are you actually serving in the, in the life of the church. And uh, so I, I would like, the good starting point would be to get close to Jesus, to become intimate with him, because we find that the Marthas, as they, as they want to serve, unless it comes from a place of, of love, and if it comes from a place of, of being filled with Jesus' love and being fulfilled and just spending intimate times with the Lord, it actually we quickly come to the place where we do feel anxious and bothered and maybe a little bit upset. And maybe you're the one that's stuck in the kitchen uh, at the whatever that camp is at the end of July, and you're just serving, 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 and everybody else seems to be having a, a ball of a time. Or maybe there's other functions where you just continually happen to be the one who's serving and serving and serving and sometimes we can get a little bit like kind of uh, bothered and anxious and a little bit upset actually like why are they having such a cool time and I'm the one who's stuck there's only 20% of us doing all the work and um, so we need to encourage more people to become like Martha's but we also need to encourage the Martha's to actually spend time with Jesus because the tendency for us as we run around and just do all these things that need to be done, and there's many things that need to be done in the running of a church and starting up a congregation, is that we quickly, and I'm guilty of that, we quickly find ourselves uh, one week, three weeks, ten weeks down the line and we've, we've barely stopped to spend good intimate times with Jesus and then we actually get tired and or we get uh, in Afrikaans or in our language back home only for a soul will understand this we get mislucker you know that word still Oh, great. A little bit like apathy and a little bit like jaded and uh, a little bit uh, tired with what what we're doing so um, so so that there really is a um, a need so that we don't become frustrated that we actually do uh, just chill and spend time in the, in the Lord's presence as well. And the interesting thing about this passage as well is that Martha, she's not actually rebuked for serving, because we do need to serve, but she's actually rebuked because she became distracted from, from actually having intimacy with Jesus. And uh, he, he was there present in the room. I mean, we've now got the Word and the Spirit, and but he, w- he was amongst them. So there might have been occasion where she might have been able to do, do slightly less than she would have been doing, and maybe, for want of a better terminology, maybe a, a, a soup and a cup of coffee might have done the trick, as opposed to maybe making a gourmet meal or something that's going to take all your time. So there'll be times when we, we actually do need to just focus on when the Lord is here, or the Lord's doing something, or there's an apostolic week like we've just had, we need to be there. We need to actually sort of drop some of the other. Uh, of course, we need serving to make the whole thing work, and we need more Marthas. We actually need more people to become Marthas so that there's just a whole lot of Marthas, and everybody gets a chance to do a little bit of the work, and we don't have 20% of the people doing 80% of, of the work so that, that it can actually work. But they were, they were good friends, and uh, Jesus found it as a, as a safe haven, as I said, as a place away from home, and, and he felt that he, he could speak lovingly, tenderly, um, but, but quite forcefully um, to somebody like Martha. He was, he was correcting her, saying, <laughs> Martha, you are troubled about a lot, and, um, and I'm here with you, and, and we are friends, so I, I can rebuke you and, and just refocus you and just uh, reprioritize uh, that you do spend time in my presence. But um, Because later on uh, in uh, John 12, the same scenario takes place, and they back in the home of of Martha again, and uh, it was after John 11 where Lazarus was raised from the dead. Uh, It was just before um, Jesus' burial, and they were chilling again, but this time Martha's doing exactly what she was doing the last time. 
She's still serving. She's still serving food. She's creating an environment which was inviting. It was a, it was a building a, a home where the Lord's presence could actually come and reside. So, so we, we're going to have two tools that we, we, uh, we could have our own homes where we need to create and foster an environment where, where the Lord's presence can, can be there. And the people we invite into our homes, we will, we will actually have a provision of the Lord's presence. And, and then also the other building would be the church where we need to continually, you know, look out and make sure that we create this environment where the Lord's presence can be. So we do need people to serve. We do need people to just to give the, the input in so that it can be a place where, where the Lord's presence can be found. I mean, Mary was, um, her worship, she was humbled, dedicated, and convicted to worship her Savior, and no expense or personal act was too great for her. And, uh, but in the same passage, the odd Lazarus is also chilling now. I mean, he's uh, been resurrected from the dead. I probably also would have been chilling for a little bit after that. Um, it wasn't long after where he was really like, I mean, he'd been raised from the dead, essentially. And uh, he was just enjoying a time in the Lord's presence as well. Mary was still there, uh, pouring out expensive perfume and washing his feet with, uh, with her hair. And, uh, and Martha, as we said, was, she was still serving, but she seemed to be in a, in a more content place. So either she had had, had time to just spend time with Jesus be, and, and just be recharged and had intimate moments that, that she could serve from a, from a place of fullness. Um, or she just had a different attitude and uh, she wasn't uh, tired and jaded and bothered and anxious um, because the Lord was, was in the room and in the presence. So. So we need Martha's to create a building or a home for the Lord to dwell in so many can come and experience him. Mary wanted to maximize the time with Jesus while he was amongst them, and Martha became distracted and missed the opportunity. So Jesus was right there amongst them. It would have been easy for, um, for Martha to maybe just to, just to take a little bit slower. I mean, he was in their presence. Uh, she kind of missed the opportunity, and it was that that she was rebuked for because she became distracted from the intimate moment of Jesus being with them. So it's quite easy for Martha's to get caught up with a form and a substance where we, we're always doing stuff and we actually... Yeah, sometimes we, we just don't stop. Even our mind is racing and we're in these meetings or we're in these apostolic meetings or we're sitting in church in worship, but we, we're planning the next thing or what's next or what needs to be done tomorrow or the next day or, or later or f- what, what's for dinner, etc. So our minds are constantly racing, but we need to be able to experience what is in front of us at the time and just in, enjoy the Lord's presence and then actually um, yeah, just yeah, enjoy the moment, enjoy the apostolic teaching, enjoy the worship, enjoy the Lord's presence so that we can be filled, so that we can go out and continue to be uh, Martha's. So our daily choices affect our lives and we must choose the better part. The better part is for sure time with Jesus. But as I said, the tension in that whole thing is that we do need more Martha's and we need people to become Martha's. So without Martha's, there's no place for Jesus to hang out. They create the environment, they create the church environment, they create the home environment. And my encouragement today is that we, we will, many more of us will become uh, Martha's and we will lighten, lighten the load. It says in Ephesians 2 verse 10 that we created to do good works. We all know that scripture very well. So we cannot afford to get caught up into the latest sort of arguments or thoughts, uh, theology that uh, Jesus loves us. It's me and him. We're sitting at home. We're just worshiping all day, and that's cool. We don't need anybody else. We don't need each other because me and Jesus, we're tight. And, um, and that's the theory that goes around often nowadays is that we, we just love by him, and all we need to do is just remain in love with him, and we don't need to do anything, which is not entirely true because we, there is stuff that needs to be done. <coughs> so we cannot be Mary's all the time. Otherwise, the kingdom of God just cannot be built and we will not build a house for the Lord. So, so we need to make sure that we don't just sit in this like, wonderful bubble because there is work to be done to build a kingdom. And there's work to be done in this area. Uh, as a young congregation, there's ex- exciting things that are going to take place. I can feel that in my spirit. I actually, when I felt prophetically, just the, the releasing of chains and coming to freedom and you know, just from what has been shared as well, this, the, there is an excitement here. There's a passion to, do, to, to go out there and just to bring people into your lives. And, uh, and I want to encourage you to do that just uh, it's, it's either, there's a both end as well. I know you guys go out in the streets and you grab all the people and come into church, and that's, that's one thing. But, but another thing would be just to, from your workplace, from, from your neighbors, um, just to invite them into, into your homes to have that meal so that Jesus can and create that environment. If you don't do it, 
then there is an environment where they will come into Jesus' presence. Sometimes it might be intimidating for them to come into a church and be yanked off the street and come in here. But if you just come and have a meal uh, in your neighborhood with your next-door neighbors, um, yeah, I mean, I would go and share this morning uh, about a, a lady who was quite antagonistic um, in terms of us getting some land in the Sunningdale venue uh, in Cape Town. And for 13 years we struggled and she was really kind of against us or yelling, screaming at us. And, and then uh, he just found out she, she had a need, she had a baby, and uh, he just decided to just go and bless her and take, a, take her a voucher for a, a baby chain store. And, just get, and, and that really softened her heart. So it's things like that that we need to be aware of and just observant and just take somebody some flowers go and mow somebody's grass um <laughs> just take a plate of cookies or bake a bake a cake and take it to your next door neighbor you'll be you'll be surprised what what the reaction will actually be so i'd like to say that we need the heart of mary to worship but the hands of martha to serve and i want to point out again that mary's failing was being distracted from his presence not that she was serving we have to have the intimacy, otherwise serving will become bothersome. So we need, it's a both and. We can't have one and not the other. And then also it's interesting, Ephesians 4 verse 16, um, it, it, we talk about having many parts. So each of us play a part uh, in this equation. we we all parts of a body. When we come together, we uh, come into fullness and uh, we actually have different giftings that operate so that we can move into maturity and fullness. And um, so we each have a part to play. It's, uh, we, we can... Um, and must play a part in becoming Martha's, but we must remain close to Jesus so that we are filled up with His presence, filled up with His love, and that we can actually go out and, and be effective. But we all have a part to play so that we can create a dwelling place for our King and grow into fullness. Um, in Matthew 25, verse 40, um, it, it is a scripture that talked about uh, somebody brought him a glass of water or some food, and he said, Oh, it, he actually refers to say, so listen, if you, if you did that to a neighbor, if you did that to somebody in the neighborhood, that it's, it's the same thing as bringing Jesus, uh, that offering and that, and that service. Okay, so we, can, we can't serve God because he does not need our service. But we can actually serve one another and we can actually serve our neighbors. And in, in that serving, it's as though we were serving the Lord. So he doesn't need our service. He doesn't need our love. Uh, he's very content. Um, but... He actually, by His grace, He chooses to come into intimate relationship with us. And also, He actually chooses us to partner with Him to build His kingdom here. So, by serving one another and by serving um, His body and our neighbors, we actually are serving serving unto the Lord. So, in closing, I didn't want to take long. How long have I got, sweetie? <laughs> Four minutes. Okay. I can do it. Four minutes. <laughs> can I have five? <laughs> okay. Because the prophecy. Okay. So how do we become, become Martha's? Uh, it's quick, six easy points. Uh, I think I can make it in five. Um, so firstly, just we need to remain connected with the source. We need to have intimacy with Jesus. As I said, God does not need our love, but by grace we are brought into relationship with Him. So we have this wonderful, warm, intimate relationship with Him. So we need to remain connected to the source. Secondly, hosting is important. Martha loved people. Not necessarily your friends all the time, even in the, even in the church on a Sunday morning. Sometimes the temptation is to hang with the people we like, the cool people, our friends. But I think we need to get out as more and more people get added to this congregation. We're going to have to get out of our comfort zones and make those who are coming through the doors feel at home. Engage them. Get into conversation with them. Look them in the eyes and like you'll, you'll quickly, they'll speak to you. They'll speak about their brokenness. They will, they will speak about their situations at home. So we need to pay attention and we need to make sure that we actually focus on them as well. That's in our homes, that's on a church on Sunday morning as well. So Martha, she ended up not just having Jesus and, you know, come into her home and chill with her, uh, her, Mary and Lazarus. There were others that came with, I can guarantee you that. There were maybe a house was filled quite often with people. So she ended up serving lots of people. It wasn't just uh, the closest uh, three that were, were close to the Lord. Um, so she looked after the house of the Lord through serving others and created a place for his presence. Jesus could park off there. He was very comfortable. It was a retreat. It was a rest. But at the same time, it was just uh, a place where he could actually just uh, be himself and others could come and just sit at his feet and actually just experience his love. And um, so if you're a church to love, you'll look for opportunities to serve people. So if you're here and you want to love people, look for opportunities to actually serve people. 
If we all learn to do this, then we become a house of Martha's. So we just collectively, all together, we become a house of Martha's. So love, love your neighbors. It changes lives. It's extravagant love. He loved us, and uh, he poured out his love on us, and uh, we can pour out our love that we that has been put into us, uh, into the, the people around us. Uh, Hebrews 13.2 speaks about not neglecting to host strangers. There might be angels amongst them. So don't, uh, don't be scared to bring people into your homes. Don't be, don't be scared to entertain strangers because amongst them you're going to find gems and really quality people that are, that are going to be uh, added to you. Invite people into your homes and uh, we all got a part to play. And uh, it's a work in progress. So if you're pretty new to this congregation, don't wait for everybody else to do it. You can jump in and, uh, and do it as well. It's, it's not that we've got it right. Do, do we, need it? we are needing to get it right, and particularly leadership. We need to show the example as, as elders and leaders. We need to open our homes, and we need to set the example and allow people to just come and, uh, and experience the love of Jesus through our homes. So. Thirdly, forgive and hold short accounts. Martha forgave Jesus. I mean, uh, there was a note went out that uh, Lazarus had died. Um, I mean, Jesus was wanting to be glorified amongst his disciples as well. So he quite happily just decided, no, we've still got work to do another couple of days. And then uh, four days later, he rocks up. And uh, obviously, Lazarus is dead by then. And uh, everybody could have been, could have been upset. And they, and they did say to Jesus, like, if you'd come... He would have been saying, I know that you could have healed him. Well, why, did, why didn't you come? And uh, so I think we actually need to um, forgive quickly. And um, yeah, it is, it is more to teach his disciples on, on the glory of God so that he could be glorified through it. And uh, I just, I'm also leaving the island with this echo in my head, this bring back the glory. I don't think anybody's ever going to forget that terminology. It's uh, just got such a wonderful ring about it. Um, so don't, don't allow ourselves to get offended with people that uh, too easily as well. Sometimes for the smallest of reasons, uh, maybe you don't get invited to somebody's birthday party, maybe somebody doesn't wave to you in the shopping mall, uh, maybe somebody like me rushed past while trying to pick up nappies in 30 seconds and we didn't see you. So don't, don't, don't get offended. All short accounts, let's, let's remain in unity. Let's remain with, with, a, with the Lord's love and so that we can actually just be effective and, and not sp- spend time getting offended and upset with one another. So forgive questions. Quickly and uh, don't get offended too easily. Fourthly, be faithful with your money. It costs to entertain. Uh, it, it costs to have people in your homes. Uh, so just be faithful that we, we build the Lord's house and uh, we're faithful with our tithes, with our offerings, with our alms, uh, so that the house can be built here and also the house can be built in your, in your homes uh, uh, out there as well. Get equipped. Uh, <laughs> just do it up front. You just just make sure you get equipped so you can serve. Martha learned to cook and host so, so she could be ready to host Jesus. So we need to sometimes, we need to, what do we need to do? What, what are the needs? Let's, let's get equipped now so that we can fill those needs so that we're able to serve and just find out what the needs are in the church. Maybe it's AV. Maybe it's more people to serve, to make meals. Maybe it's, the uh, worship looks pretty covered. <laughs> it looks pretty good. But, but there's many needs as the church grows that, uh, that are sometimes behind the scenes. And uh, we need you to start just applying your mind and just uh, what, what giftings do you have? What, what can you add? And if you need to learn something, get equipped. Uh, if it's sound, come and learn how to do sound if that's what's going to be required. It might look like we've got a few buttons and one person doing it now. But uh, I've come from a congregation where I've seen it happen where we were 80 or 100 people, then we were 150, now we're 300 plus with, with some kids. And um, sound has had to develop and worship's had to develop. And from one person leading worship with uh, uh, a desk probably half the size of that to now having sort of four or five sound teams and five worship teams and things like that. And, and the children's facility going from two or four people serving to needing 34 people to serve, you know, the, the things will grow. And so get equipped now. Find out what you're gifted at and be prepared to actually get involved as well. And lastly, stay close to Jesus and listen. So by, you can stay close to Jesus by your own intimate times with him, by spending time reading his word, but also just trust your leadership as well. They, they also they hear from the Lord and stay close to your elders, stay close to your leadership. And, and, when, and when they just bring things, this is where we're going, this is the vision, this is what we want to do, get, get behind them and, and listen to them uh, as they're listening to the Lord as well. And, uh, and listen for yourself. I mean, you need to listen to them, you need to obey your leaders. Uh, and you need to just uh, follow their vision, um, but but also 
you need to go home and you need to be working through yourself, spending time with the Lord and just spending time in His Word. And if you're uncertain about anything, come and come and challenge the leadership, and they will they will sit down with you and uh, have coffee. Yeah, we used to we used to laugh back home if you got a coffee with an elder, it generally meant trouble. You know, it was like, uh, would you like to come for coffee? Mm, not really. <laughs> it's fine. I'm kind of busy. <laughs> like no, no, I meant we are going for coffee. So it's called a cappuccino where, where we come from. So, so. <laughs> so, but yeah, but no, it's really, it's just make yourselves accountable to one another. It's, uh, it's really not as bad as it seems. And, uh, and they've got a destiny for your life and they want to speak into your life and they want to point you in the right direction and, and help you just, uh, just remain on course because sometimes we don't, we only see and hear in part. And, uh, sometimes they've got the other part and you just present yourselves to them, especially with big decisions that you need to make, moving places. Uh, I mean, it was wonderful. The prophecy this morning, uh, the couple is here as well, eh? and, uh, Mary and yeah. Yeah, I feel like guys this morning, like I know you just spoken to so it's like six weeks ago, and what do I do? And it's suddenly bang, prophetic word, and uh, it's kind of like, whoa, okay, that's that's awesome, man. So yeah, I just wanted to leave, it's it's not a it's not a long and complicated sermon, but I just wanted to just to encourage you that uh, there's work to be done, and you're at the beginning of, of an exciting phase. Uh, Congregation So Big is going to grow, and I, I can I can feel and hear the excitement, so so just be prepared to serve, be prepared to become Martha's, but, but remain connected to the source, just remain intimate with Him, and uh, if you're a Martha, of which some of us are, <laughs> you need to get connected. You need to remain connected because quickly we can wear out, quickly we can become burnt out, and um, yeah, and quickly we can just find ourselves getting a little bit bothered and flustered because everybody else seems to be having a cool time. Um, but you can have that cool time too. But uh, for those who are having a really cool time, uh, we need you as well, and we need you to be involved and for everybody as a small church just to, to serve, which you have the privilege of doing when you are small. And then, uh, yeah, just to lay down your lives and just to, to come and come and serve. I'm excited about you guys. I'm, I'm really just, uh, yeah, in my spirit, I just see that there's going to be great things going to happen here, that this place is going to become free and people are going to come in here and quickly move to health and, uh, and just, yeah, this is going to be exciting times coming as you grow. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. And it's been wonderful being on the island. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back for sure. <laughs>